What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and a new report shows both the Eternals and Shang-Chi are at major risk with Marvel. And it's actually kind of disappointing to see because I don't have anything inherently against either one of these films or any of the actors or actresses in them. It's not like one of those things where you have this you know, divisive figure like Brie Larson, even though I love her deeply, um, in Captain Marvel. It's not like that. It's just like, I think Marvel got so cocky that they were like, we can release literally anything. We're going to focus on, you know, diversity more than, you know, bringing out new, in, or I'm sorry, bringing out the characters that everyone already likes, which is not a bad plan, to be honest with you. I think you'd want to do it more of a mixture, though. <coughs> Excuse me. There's nothing you could do about losing Robert Downey Jr., uh, Chris Evans, these people want to go do other things with their acting careers, and I understand that. But ultimately, I think Marvel got way too cocky and decided, let's just make face for a bunch of nobodies um, so that we can say we're, you know, diversifying the MCU when nobody really has even heard of Shang-Chi. This movie appears to, from, you know, all reviews that I've seen, as a decent like general action film not a not a marvel movie but a in general a decent action movie and the actors and actresses in the movie haven't really stirred up any major controversies but the world really is turning off cape films it's going to be interesting because all of the predictions thus far have said that marvel's shang chi is going to be a colossal box office failure but i it's weird it's more like Marvel's hubris is why this movie is going to let people down. It's not going to be because the movie's terrible. It's going to be another middle-of-the-road Marvel movie just like Black Widow was. Marvel's Eternals and Shang-Chi are said to be at risk, which follows recently reported that Shang-Chi tanks at the box office this weekend. Disney will change the November release date for Eternals. Just where exactly the flicks are at risk is cause for a big concern, as Eternals and Shang-Chi are said to be at risk in the number two market in the world. China, which happens to love Marvel movies. Variety posted a good article, Why Hollywood Movies Are Being Squeezed Out in China and What Happens Next, and goes over the latest box office releases for Hollywood flicks to hit the Middle Kingdom, where it stated that Hollywood movies used to dominate the Chinese box office, but they don't anymore. This year, there are only two U.S. pictures in China's top 15 rankings, states the article, where it's noted that in contrast, the top two films at the global box office so far this year are China's High Mom at $822 million and Detective Chinatown 3, $686 million. By the way, this, these are numbers that far surpass anything in the U.S. market. The next closest we have is F9, Fast 9, uh, which did $681 million, which is actually mind-blowing i've got to be honest the 10th film i think in the franchise if you include the offshoot still doing nearly 700 million dollars in a post-lockdown era goes to show that mindless action films still do pretty good um movies that aren't heavily politicized still do pretty good i saw these articles about how <coughs> excuse me how Candyman was like this colossal success at the box office this weekend. It did 20 million and it's going to disappear in week two. What are you talking about? That movie's not even going to do a hundred million dollars. The article goes over the various reasons why Hollywood movies aren't doing all that well in China, but particularly worrisome is the article says there hasn't been a significant, significant, a single significant Hollywood release in China since a quiet place part two on May 28th and Luca on August 20th. Regarding Marvel, Avengers Endgame, the last Marvel Studios movie to be released in China, which brought in over $175 million, but so far Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and the Eternals have no Chinese release dates. Even Ant-Man and the Wasp managed to bring in $70 million in China for Marvel, which would be almost 20% of Black Widow's current box office gross. So we see just how important China is to the success of Hollywood, who often panders to the Chinese office, our audience, and government. In addition, the article adds, by the way, this is via Cosmic Book News. In addition, the article adds why both Shang-Chi and the Eternals are at risk. We're worth a mention is that the Chinese box office makes up a large portion of not only the box office of Marvel movies, but many Hollywood franchises with examples like Triple X, Warcraft, and Resident Evil were sustained by getting a Chinese release. 
Movies that may be at risk include The Eternals, directed by Chloe Zhao, who was branded a traitor by our past comments, Shang-Chi and The Legend of Ten Rings, where Disney may not have done enough to defuse charges of racism, Space Jam, A New Legacy, because American basketball continues to be a sensitive subject, following the NBA officials' 2019's comments on Hong Kong, Top Gun, which is seen as promoting the U.S. military. And by the way, this is even in the face of Disney bending the knee and removing like the Taiwanese flag from the movie to suckle at the Chinese teat. We also have to add that the Chinese reaction to Chang Chi, Shang Chi trailers hasn't been good. The Shang Chi's Aquafina starred in Raya and The Last Dragon, where it was rejected by the Chinese audience. <coughs> and if you think the the lockdowns are to blame, while well, Ali, this article uses the pan, the the lockdowns as a reason, it also stated. In late July filing, IMAX China indicated that audiences have returned to Chinese theaters, in particularly I'm in particular IMAX theaters, with numbers approximately pre-lockdown attendance level, but they're there for Chinese language films and a handful of the Hollywood films that were available. This on top of news in early August, and even as of August 31st, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings box office worldwide predicted to be the worst opening in Marvel's history. Being a part of Phase 4, Shang-Chi also created hype around it in the early reviews poured in with positive remarks. This is going to be, you know, a further explanation of what I've been saying. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not like it's a bad movie. I don't think, you know, Black Widow was a bad movie. It's just that people are going to see Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. Normies. You need normies to do $500 million. They're going to see that and they're not going to have any idea that it's a Marvel movie. None. Because Marvel got cocky and didn't bring this character in and, and you know, grow their prominence through co-ops with other existing Marvel characters. They waited too long. Now, yes, Doctor Strange did pretty good and so did Captain Marvel making a billion dollars at the box office, but that was in a different time. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Bo of, um, sorry, Ten Rings box office predicted to have the worst opening weekend in the history of the MCU. The film star starring Simu Lau and Aquafina is one of the most anticipated Marvel flicks. No, it isn't. Uh, Studio 4's, uh, fa Studios Phase 4 kickstarted several new and exciting projects such as WandaVision, Black Widow, and The Eternals. Being part of Phase 4, Shang-Chi also created hype around it and the early reviews poured in with positive marks. The film has one of the best action scenes ever and incorporates a diverse culture into the story. However, regardless of what the review said, the film is predicted to have a bad opening weekend at the box office. According to the box office tracker website, Box Office Pro, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten, Ten Rings is on track to, have Mar to be Marvel's worst performer. It's predicted that the movie would earn between 35 and 55 million during opening weekend. <clears throat> now, if it makes 55 million, that's pretty decent. I feel like Black Widow was somewhere in the 80s, wasn't it? I feel like it was in the 80s. Um, even though the numbers for Chang Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings do not look bad, when compared, it will take the bottom place from 2008's Incredible Hulk. The movie generated only 55 million during its opener. However, if inflation is kept in mind, the Incredible Hulk will have earned 70 million in 2021. It's also predicted that the overall domestic revenue in the film will generate will be between 100 million and 165 million during its theatrical run. That is brutal. These predictions might come true considering the fans are not familiar with the new character. Shang-Chi also does not have a selling point of the Avengers movie or any reoccurring superhero. On top of that, the lockdowns play an important role in the release too. Unlike the rest of the films released during the coup, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be released exclusively in theaters. According to Marvel CEO's Kevin Feige, this will be a test for future films made by the studio. Let me tell you how this is going to work out. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that they're going to go to the uh, simul simultaneous release. Um, $30 is still too much for me to pay to stream something at home. It's a matter of principle. I'm not hating on people that want to spend that money. But, you know, if Shang-Chi was $10 in addition to the Disney Plus membership, I'd probably pay it to watch it at home. But there's nothing compelling about this movie. There's no continuation of any existing storylines. There's no cameos from anyone that I want to see. There's no actors that I care about in this film. There's literally no reason for me to go see Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, this movie will be out over the holiday weekend, I think, right? 
Uh, so it may be buoyed by that because it'll have extended time off. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, I don't think that you can hold this to the same standard even as Black Widow, who is an extraordinarily well-known character worldwide. You have to kind of place it on its own pedestal, you know, its own kind of, you know, and the budget for Shang-Chi is anywhere near, you know, uh, I feel it was like the production received, wait, the budget, what is the budget? Will it flop? Oh, a budget of 150 to 200 million. Ooh, that's higher than I thought. That's way higher than I thought. Is that what Roger, Roger Ebert is saying? Um, I don't know if it's 150 to 200 million. That's a big, big matzo ball. Shane Chi has a hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollar budget. That means they have to make three hundred to four hundred million dollars just to break even. They're not going to do that. They're going to lose a hundred million dollars on this movie, just like they lost money on Black Widow. Now I do think Black Widow will probably break even over time. Yikes! I mean, what is this going to mean for some of their other more obscure Phase Four releases? You know, like I mean. Doctor Strange kind of phasing, you know, kind of kind of falling out of favor, I think. You've got The Eternals, which is going to be a disaster, absolute disaster. You've got um, Thor Love and Thunder. That's going to be the real test for me. No, check that. Spider-Man No Way Home. I still think Spider-Man is a massive draw and will still do big numbers at the theater. But I do think that Spider-Man No Way Home is going to set the new high water mark for the post you know end game era of marvel then you've got black panther wakanda forever not the same doesn't hit the same um guardians of the galaxy eh, like eh, eh. you know blade without wesley snipes eh. i mean this is going to be a rough patch for disney where they're going to have more misses than hits and i'm here for it hope you enjoyed this video we'll talk to you again real soon